Okay, Power Mat is back. This will be the installation of the heat exchanger or the water block for the chipset. So, first things first, let's figure out what screws it takes to remove them. Looks like standard Phillips. There, 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 that sort of thing. So, Let's start by removing the screws. This piece here is actually a heat sink for the bottom. You can see the tape, how it's pressed in. kind of wiggle the uh, heat sink on the chipset to get it pop free. Um, so you see the two there. Light pipe, heat pipe between them. Excuse me, light pipe. Um, similar type of scenario over here. Kind of just kind of lift, but be firm but gentle until the heat tape kind of breaks loose. And and heat tape kind of laid like that and voila as they say in the business that is the end of that <coughs> now EK has supplied installation hardware many little nice and evidently quality check by 31 so we're Basically what the document shows you is what you're dealing with, what you're removing, and where things are. This shows you where we're taking all the screws out. This shows you that you're cleaning every, every bit of goo or whatever off of the chipset itself. And this is where you're applying thermal compound. Then the heat tape and so on and so forth. So we'll do a little of that prep and then we'll be back. All right, we have applied the thermal tape over the regulators. And on this side, there's about that much you need to cut off to keep the holes clear. The regulators completely covered. It's interestingly enough that I've used Arctic MX4 before and I rather I'm okay with it. They actually spec out in the document to use MX2 or MX4. Um, so it was lucky enough that I had some around here. Uh, I guess it says any non-conductive. This is just uh, my Hilton door key left over, so I'm just using it as a uh, compound spreader. Says you never want to get too much. Nice light film is usually more than acceptable. Um, so I usually put like a small dot right in the middle and just kind of spread it all around. This one's a little more tough. What would really be handy is some of those cool little spatulas that they have for that size. Yep. Okay, so then we're going to maneuver the water block. There are actual notches <coughs> all around this water block for these larger capacitors. Um, you want to do your best, coming from an electronics background, you want to do your best not to move those capacitors because they are obviously soldered to the board and they would fracture. So what I'm trying to feel now is if everything is going where it's supposed to be. Kind of looks as if it is. The holes seem to line up. And at this point, you don't want to let go of it because it'll take the heat tape and the heat sink off. It doesn't really have an order. The document does not really have an order in which it recommends the screw installation. <coughs> it just obviously um, illustrates the washers and things like that. Whenever you 
you never want to manhandle a motherboard. Now that's not all of them, but now we can just check and see the fit. It looks good. And now I don't have to hold it from the bottom anymore. Actually, it was interesting, I just noticed this, that it does not show the plastic insulators, the spacers on the 25 by 8s that go over this heat sink plate. Um, it just shows them basically everywhere else. Um, so, I may take those back off, may leave them on. I don't see any con to leaving them on. <coughs> much easier when you don't have to hold the board and attach the screws at the same time <coughs> and left over in the bag of hardware that I received I have one longer screw one shorter screw and a insulating washer so okay there you have it one water block installed not so tough, huh? Looks pretty nice, especially when you get all the fingerprints off of it. It should be pretty shiny. That's it from Power Man for now. Stay tuned for more.